Katie Bishop. I have several jobs here in Chattanooga. One, I run the food bank garden at Chattanooga Area Food Bank. I manage their 23 raised beds. I'm also a program assistant at UT Extension here in Chattanooga. And I'm a member of the Master Gardener of Hamilton County. So this is a talk today on potatoes. It's springtime here in Chattanooga and it's time to get your potatoes in the ground. Potato is a tuberous crop in the nightshade family, which also includes tomato, pepper, and eggplant. Potatoes like a well-drained, loose soil, full sun, but they'll grow in just about anything. You plant a seed potato in the early spring and then you harvest when the plant starts to die off, usually about 85 days. And from one plant, you can get about seven or eight potatoes. Potatoes are in the nightshade family, along with tomatoes and eggplants. And this is a picture of two different tomato types. If you talk about a tomato leaf, you'll get a regular tomato leaf, like on this Rutgers, and then brandy wines have a potato leaf. So this, if somebody talks about a tomato with a potato leaf, this is what this shows. So the bottom picture there, the brandy wine, is a potato leaf. When you buy your potatoes, you usually should get them from a hardware store. The regular potatoes in a grocery store may be sprayed with a suppressant. And this is to keep them from sprouting in the grocery store with the light. So this was from Ace Hardware. It's a five pound bag of potatoes. You look inside, some of them have already started to sprout. Um, there were about 20 potatoes in this bag and you wanna check for any of them that feel real mushy. Obviously just throw those out. To get your potatoes ready to plant, you need to generally cut them. Um, you only want two or three eyes on each piece of potato. Cut them with a sharp knife, not a serrated. A serrated knife will leave the edges of the potato that you cut kind of jagged. And this will allow for more bacteria to come into the potato when, it, when you're trying to harden it off. You don't want to have too many eyes or plant such a large potato. If you have too many eyes on it, then the plant itself will become too bushy. And you want to force the plant to produce more potatoes and not just necessarily live off of the seed potato. So you hear, you'll see most of these in here have been cut and there's some of them have three eyes, some may have four, but generally you try to get two or three eyes on it. If your potato is small, um, golf ball size, or just a little bit bigger, there's really no need to cut that one at all. You need, a, you need enough of the seed potato to support the plant itself. Because just like any other seed, this is where the, the smaller plant gets all its nutrients from until you can get enough leaves on the plant to have photosynthesis and support the plant that way. So this is no different than any other seed, like if you put in an okra seed, the little seed itself has all the nutrients the plant needs until it gets its true leaves as opposed to the seed leaves. So after you cut your potatoes, you let them sort of harden off for two or three days. This is just on a shelf in the food bank greenhouse, but you can set them any place that gets uh, enough air circulation in a cool place out of the sun. And uh, this is just on a lower shelf. You could put them in, in your garage or in just a dark area. You obviously don't want a lot of sunlight on them because um, that will just encourage more of the sprouting. So at this point, you don't really want really big sprouts on them. You just want to keep, let them harden off a little. And you do this so they just don't rot directly into the ground when you put them in there. So chitting, C-H-I-T, means to encourage the seed potato to sprout before it's planted. So you'll see that top one there has uh, one sprout that's really going. Now you, you find this sometime in your potatoes that you get in the store too, and those would probably be okay to sprout. Obviously they have not been sprayed. You could probably find organic potatoes that haven't been sprayed, but a lot of your potatoes will not sprout if they've been sprayed. 
And you also see where they turn a little dark and brown. That's fine too. That's just the potato starch doing that. And those are fine to plant. As long as they're not real uh, soft and mushy, they're, they're good to go. So you can see a nice sprout on that one. And then right next to it, there's just a little tiny sprout. But it's, it's perfectly fine if they turn black or brown or um, a very dark yellow. That's exactly what you need. And once they do this, they're fine to sit there a good week or so. So you don't have to worry about getting them right in the ground right then and there. You're going to dig a trench at least eight inches deep. Um, it's harder to do in raised beds like what we have at the food bank. If you're doing directly in ground, this is the, you can probably dig a little deeper bit uh, trench to it, but you need it at least eight inches deep and put the potatoes in, sprout in up 12 inches apart, and then you can cover that with at least six inches of soil. Now, if you're in ground, you can obviously build a, dig a deeper trench. And that way it'll allow you later on, we'll talk about how to, how to hill that in. So at least 12 inches apart, I wouldn't try to crowd it too much. Like any other, your vegetables and your annual plants, if you crowd them, you really don't get it as big as crop. A lot of these uh, vegetables will only grow to the size of your container. So if you crowd them up and your plants get too crowded, then you, don't, you get a smaller harvest. So this is the bed here. I, uh, this is a four by eight bed. So the trenches down the side, I put potatoes every 12 inches, and then I just put a couple of them in between down the middle. Now you can see the row down the middle will not have enough soil to cover them over, except for probably one time. The trenches on the side, I was able to pack the soil up underneath the edges. So in a raised bed, it's very hard to hill them in except for one time. Obviously, you ran out of soil. So when the plants get to be about 12 inches tall, you can cover them halfway up with soil. Now I generally judge that probably by the length of your hand. So when the plant's about elbow to hand high, then you can cover them halfway up and just hold the leaves up. You don't have to trim off all the leaves and everything. Just hold the leaves up and pile the soil up around the base of the plant. If you have a container that's big enough or if you're in ground, once the plant again is 12 inches tall, you can kind of hold up all the leaves and then hill up more soil halfway up. You can continue to do this as long as you have soil to do it and as long as your container is big, uh, big enough to do that. That's why people do this like with tires or any of your other things. That as long as you can keep adding another area to put more soil, then that's fine to do that. When you bury the, the stems on that, that will encourage more growth um, for more potatoes. So there, it's just halfway up the plant. This is called, um, when they put off a shoot, that's called a stolen. So the stolens from the shoot is where the potatoes will form. You want to water one to two inches a week and then use a fertilizer that's a 5-10-10 or an 8-24-24 and this is more beneficial for the potato growth itself. If you use something um, with a higher nitrogen number, that's the first number, you'll get more of a bushy plant. You want to encourage not so much the bushy plant part, you want to encourage the growth itself. So you fertilize about two weeks after you plant them. Let the, let the sprouts come up a little bit and then do a, a light fertilizer there. And then you want to fertilize them later on in the growing season. And then you can do maybe a little bit heavier fertilizer at that point. The potato really does have a pretty little flower on it. This is a, a bed actually in my backyard. There's a close up of the potato flower. And when they start flowering, that's when you actually start, um, potatoes are starting to form. Potatoes are often planted in all kinds of different containers. This is just a recycled grocery bag that I folded down the sides on it. 
and just some regular potting soil in there. You can mix potting soil with some of your regular garden yard soil. Um, put it down in the bag. You just fold the sides down. You can do this easily with a bag of potting soil itself. Buy a bag of potting soil, turn the sides down halfway, save that soil, put your seed sprout in there, and then as it sprouts up, you unroll the sides and add more soil. So therefore your container gets larger and as your container gets taller, then you can add more soil to it and the potato will continue to, um, to grow in there. The plant grow up and hopefully the potatoes grow on the bottom. But uh, you have to be careful. You can't put too many seed potatoes in a container this size. This is another example of this. You'll see the duct tape on the bottom of that bag. We made a little, this was for a, a children's project, and we made a little opening with that duct tape. So you could open the bag and reach your hand in and grab one potato out and then, and then reclose it back up. Whatever bag you're using, you want to make sure that some of the water can drain out. Obviously, those are just little canvas bags there, so the water will drain out. If you're using a bag like from the potting soil itself, you need to poke some holes in the bottom so the water can drain out. You, otherwise, you're going to end up with a giant mud puddle. So this is sitting on a four by eight bed, and the bed behind there are potatoes itself. When you dig the plant, make sure you dig right next to the plant, and then sort of loosen the soil around that. Most of your potatoes are going to be directly underneath the foliage, under the plant itself. Now this. Um, bed I think probably could have set in there another couple weeks at the food bank I just needed to get those potatoes out and some some uh, some other summer garden plant in the longer you let them sit in there the more potatoes you have and the potatoes you'll probably get are bigger but doing a three season crop at the food bank I need to turn the beds over so this was probably um, put it in probably the end of March or sometime first of April and this was harvested in June. So roughly that time frame. But you need to be careful about digging too close to the bed. Loosen the soil, kind of dig up near it, and then that way maybe you can get your shovel underneath it or your, if the soil's soft enough, your hands underneath it and gently pull the plant at the same time. The little mushy one there on the left is at right by my thumb is actually the seed potato. So this plant, you don't often find the seed potato still connected to the plant, but this plant still had the seed potato as well as, as the regular potatoes when I was digging this up. So there's a picture of the stolen. You can see it attached further up. That's the white looking string there um, that's further up on the stem itself. The rest of them are attached lower. There's a nice picture of that too. These potato plants obviously in the raised bed were only buried one time and I still got about eight potatoes off of them. So that's that's doing pretty good and I don't remember if my I maybe I fertilized these beds one time but pay, potatoes are a hardy crop and they are fairly easy to grow. You can see where it's kind of darker color right at the base of the plant. Um, that's probably where the stem potatoes rotted out. And you don't really want to water or fertilize two weeks before harvest. You just want the plants to sort of just die off by, their, by themselves. You can see those bottom leaves starting to turn yellow and brown there, not necessarily the top ones. You don't want to encourage more growth on the plant or the roots or the potatoes themselves before you harvest. If potatoes are too close to the surface and they get a lot of sunlight, they'll turn sort of green. And you want to try to prevent that green. The green um, is called solanine and that can, it's, it's not harmful to eat a small portion of that, but it can make you feel ill if you eat a lot. I wouldn't advise eating green potatoes. You, if you, there's a small area on a potato, you can certainly just cut that out, but use some straw or mulch or try to rebury those potatoes that are close to the surface, somehow get them out of the sunlight. And this can also happen with potatoes that you buy in the store. And that's why they also tell you 
just to store them in a dark, cool place. And you always want to store potatoes out of the sunlight. The sunlight will make them turn green. And it's, the, it's a chemical compound in there. When you dig up your potatoes, the skins will be very soft and easy to rip. You want to let them set out and air dry. And I would let them do this a couple hours even before you handle them. It, it just hardens, the, it'll harden them up pretty quickly, just the skins themselves. So be very careful when you dig potatoes, even don't try to rub the soil off of them. Even just rubbing the soil like that will, will damage the skin on these little potatoes. And once it's damaged, it's more, more prone to get mushy and get more bacteria. So just dig them up gently. Don't try to handle them or brush them off or clean them off or wash them or anything else. Just let them, let them air dry. And the small potatoes do not store well, and you just want to use these first, or even the ones that got split with the shovel. These don't store well at all either. So use the smaller ones or ones that happen to get damaged during harvest. Use those right away. Don't try to store those at all. That's the end of this slideshow. Um, if you like this, I just want you to remember that you can go to the Master Gardener Hamilton County webpage and we will be having more gardening vegetables on there. And if you have any questions, you can certainly contact me at the food bank or through UT Extension. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.